The sun's going down, so we're prepping for a little stargazing. Now, I'm an ecologist, so I don't spend a lot of time looking through a telescope. But you don't have to study space to appreciate the unique, awe-inspiring view that you can only get on a cloudless night. Now, King David was similarly captivated. In Psalm 8, he wrote, When I look at the heavens and the work of your hands, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, what is man that you're mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Imagine how much more he would have marveled if he had known that the universe is so much bigger than what surrounds the planet that we inhabit. The mysteries of space and all we have to learn about dark matter and dark energy and the origin of the universe make the study of astronomy one of the most exciting frontiers of modern science. It's shaped the way we understand our place in the universe and even the way we read the Bible. Now, roughly 500 years ago, almost everyone in the Western world believed that the Earth was at the center of the known universe. At that time, the universe was not thought to be very large, especially compared to what we understand today. They believed the Earth was stationary and that the sun, moon, and stars were moving over their heads. This geocentric view fit with their experience of the world and their understanding of the Hebrew scriptures which say the sun rises and the sun sets, implying that it moves, while other passages say that the earth is firmly established and will not be moved, implying that it does not. The book of Joshua even contains an account of the sun miraculously standing still, extending the daylight to assist the Israelites in battle. The geocentrism was eventually questioned, most notably by Nicholas Copernicus, who was later supported by Galileo and others whose scientific observations pointed to a heliocentric solar system. Heliocentrism holds that the sun is at the center of our solar system and that we are spinning around it. One revolution of the earth is a day and one trip around the sun is a year. Hopefully that sounds familiar because that's what we now believe to be true. While this view was initially controversial, it answered many astronomical problems. However, it also created challenges as people began to question their sense of reality and more consequently, the authority of the Bible. Copernicus died shortly after publishing his theory, but Galileo did not and was publicly challenged. He was put on trial as a heretic and his books were banned by the Catholic Church. Now this scuffle is often cited as an example of a science versus scripture conflict. But Galileo's sentence may have had more to do with his attitude and underhanded humiliation of the Pope than his heliocentric views. After all, Johannes Kepler also advocated for a heliocentric view of the solar system, but he did so without trial or persecution. Eventually, Copernicus and Galileo were posthumously exonerated by the Catholic Church when heliocentrism was recognized as the correct orientation of our celestial geography. We no longer debate the position of the earth, and yet Christianity still upholds the biblical canon as the inspired word of God, even though science contradicts a plain reading of a few select passages. How did we manage that? Well, this wasn't a debate of science versus religion. It was a debate about interpreting the Bible. The dominant view at that time held that scripture is best understood through the plain meaning of the words. This is often called a literal interpretation. For example, in Joshua 10, when it says the sun stood still, then the sun stood still. But Galileo, a devout Catholic, agreed with the view proposed by Friar Paolo Antonio Foscarini that scripture speaks according to our mode of understanding and according to appearances and in respect to us. That means that the authors of scripture wrote what they understood and God did not correct their scientific errors in part so the original audience could understand the message. So if it appeared that the sun stood still, then that is what went into scripture, even if in reality the sun is always standing still relative to the position of the earth. So thanks in part to a few early astronomers, most pastors and Bible scholars now agree with some sense of accommodation, that God accommodated the understandings of the authors of scripture and let his people tell the story. So even though scripture contains scientific oddities like pointing toward geocentrism, 
Jesus teaching that the mustard is the smallest of seeds, even though it's not, and that birds do not store food, even though some do, these and other errors of scientific precision in Scripture should not bother us. We read and reread Scripture to find wisdom and ourselves in the story of Israel and to be inspired to follow Jesus by the account of his life, death, and resurrection. We should not tie biblical inspiration to scientific precision. Instead, we need to learn to approach the Bible as the Word of God through the eyes of its original authors and audience. We'll talk about how to read the Bible with accommodation in mind in a future video. At Disciple Science, we believe that integrating science with Christian faith can inspire a fuller knowledge of God. We are a crowdfunded nonprofit, so we can't make these videos without your support. You can help by giving a one-time donation, or we would love it if you would consider becoming a monthly supporter. You can donate by visiting our website at DiscipleScience.com.